Graham, one question that constantly I'm asked is English football ever going to produce their own version of Jurgen Klopp or Pep Guardiola? Um, when you look at it, and then we started, producer Luke and myself started digging this morning into the statistics. 40 years it will be since an English manager won the European Cup or Champions League. Got to go back to Brian Clough mm -hmm. with Nottingham Forest. Sir Bobby, Sir Bobby Robson was the last English manager to win a European trophy of note. And that was a Cup Winners' Cup in, in 1997 with Barcelona. You're spot on. Before that, of course, he won uh, the UEFA Cup with Ipswich uh, back in 1981. So you've got to go back a long, mm. long way. And then you come to think about some of the people you've played under, serious, serious football people themselves, like Bob Paisley and Joe Fagan. Mm. Could they manage in the game today? And if so, what degree of success... Would well, they have? Is there anybody I, could? could I'm, not, I'm not sure. Listen, I, what, I, what I would say is that, that Bob Paisley, Joe Fagan were geniuses in their own right. You know, Bob inherited a situation from Shanks and he took it on. And his, his record is the greatest. I think he was a manager for nine years and what he won. Um, and then Joe inherited a really good squad again from Bob Paisley and took on and we won a treble in his first year. Um, they they were they were great men, great football men, but I think they were struggling in the modern game. But I didn't, I wasn't a manager. I say struggle, not struggle. I just think, you know what? They wouldn't want they wouldn't want to be a manager in the modern game. I think that, that's that's a better way to approach it. They would not want to be a manager in the modern modern game. It's to be too too much media um, work involved for them. They were true, genuine football people. They were the happiest when they were around footballers, at the training ground. I think Shanks. The little I know about Shanks, I didn't work under him, but the stories you hear, and I met him when he, when I was a player there, he was he was still around the place. He'd turn up on match days and just want to talk about football, and you're going to play a game an hour later, and he's holding in a corridor talking about football. I think he could in a modern game. Um, and the, the one that, for me, would would do it standing on his head. He did, when he was young, he'd do is Jock Steen. And why I say that, Jock Steen had a, a personality which was, he was, I, I was, I've always been a confident boy. I've always been, you know, full of more importance, no. right or wrong. Really? But I, I was, I was in all of them. I was, I was, well, fearful, that's too strong a word, but trepidation, is that a better word? Mm. You know, I, I was, you used to look at me, I don't want to cross soldiers with you anytime. And um, he was, he was a real, Cutie as well. He could manage people. He could, you know, he could make you feel ten foot tall. And the next time you're in a get together one, which was in my case with the Scottish team, he would come after you. I can remember an incident. We were in Brussels. Kenny and I had gone out um, the day before the game for a for just to walk around the city centre. We got our times wrong. Got back to the hotel. A lovely hotel in the centre of Brussels. He gave it to us in the in the foyer in front of maybe twenty thirty people. And then we walked down the corridor, which seemed a hell of a long way to the meeting room where all the players were waiting for us. He gave it as we're walking down the corridor. Then you get into the meeting room and you sit down and you think, oh, that wasn't good. And then he gave it to us again in front of the players. And I think he worked on the premise that I can give it to these so the rest of you behave. Because we were you knew quite, where quite you senior with players. Yeah. But he, he had a, this a, is Jock Steen, of course, with the Lions, He had a Nora about him, which was, which, which, which was quite unique. And I, I've got to tell you the story. The great Hugh McIlvenny, one of the greatest sports writers we ever had. Mm. I went for a lunch with him one day and I asked this question. I said, OK, there's a lunch taking place and there's Busby, there's Shanks, there's Revy and, and there's Steen. Who is the dominant voice? Who did he say? Steen. So there's Busby, yeah. Shanks and Revy and Steen. All the great managers of the day. Who was the one they all listened to? Jock Steen. But it's interesting that yeah. from your yeah. aisles, from your part of the world, you fling forward these unique characters, Ferguson dominating Man United and well, elevating Fer them. Fergie, he, he, he was his apprentice. He was Jock Steen's apprentice. He hung on every word that Jock said. But it's, there's something about the character that gets... That's why I'm always so... And, and joking to one side, that's why I'm so disappointed sometimes in the, in the state of Scottish football because of the players and managers that have flung forward, like him, like Hanson, like other players that you can name, like Dalgleish, and you can go on and on and on. But I remember watching an interview that Bill Shankly did with Mavis Nicholson in 1970... I didn't watch it in 76, but I've seen it since. And you talk about managers being able to translate in their philosophies. 
I think Shankly was a unique thinker, not just because of quotes like, you know, football is more important than life and death and stuff like that yeah. that gets taken away, yeah. but the way he looked at it in the most... And I think he would have been able to if he could have been bothered... He was like with, the current with, manager. Yeah. That, that bond he has with the supporters. Yeah. But the manner in which he dealt with young footballers and the thought processes of football... And, oh, that's different yeah. now, Simon. That's a different... Oh, no, but I think, he, I think he had the intellectual capability to be able to pivot and be a product of a new time. So I think someone like Shankly, if he could have been bothered... Would have still been effective and cut through yeah. in this day and age. Yeah. It wouldn't stand for any nonsense. You know, I, I do remember an occasion Scotland were due to play Sweden uh, in a match up in Sweden, and I suggested to him we should go there and win, shouldn't we? There. Oh well, yeah, if you're suggesting that, that, you're <laughs> suggesting that. Oh yeah, it's nailed on then, yeah. isn't it? Everybody gather round. He's going to tell us how we're going to go. And belittled you. Oh yeah, and he was good and, at that. And he was good. And at the end of it, when we stopped running, he got a hold of me. He said. Don't just think. I said, no, I get it. I get it. We did win. Strachan scored. It was 1-0. Um, when you look back in it, Graham, between 1997 and 1984, English managers lifted the, the, the Champions League trophy, European Cup, seven times in eight years. Unbelievable. I mean, so now, who's going to bridge the gap? Who is going to bridge this gap? Well, you know, why has it happened like this? Why is there... All the big teams are managed by foreign foreign coaches is it because the foreign owners now is it because the influx of foreign players coming to the game um you know we have is it because countries have a good national team you know spanish managers are popular so they had a secret the spanish coaches because the spanish national team was so good mm. is it because of that? I, I i can't answer that i think what i will guarantee you, there will be a ma an english guy or a british guy comes along who like fergie will dominate and be manager of one of the best teams in the country. That will happen. It will. Do you think that will happen, Simon? P possibly. I think there's lots of reasons why. I think the globalisation has come into play. Why is our Premier League so wonderful? It's got nothing to do with foreign ownership, but it's all got to do with the fact that we decided economically to be the most powerful league, and then all the money came in, and you the best see, players you came. You see, it's not because of foreign ownership. Look at all. Look at the Man United foreign ownership, foreign coach. Man City foreign ownership, foreign coach. Liverpool, foreign owners, foreign coach. Oh, you look at OK, you look at Chelsea. And they gave, a British, they gave an Englishman a chance in Grand Potter. Yeah. So they make the decisions based upon the best in class. Arsenal, and the and the, foreign owners, foreign coach. And, 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 and the reasons why... That's I, the think, big, I think that's, I think well, that's it, a bigger reason. It might reason. be possible. Maybe the interview better than the English maybe, and, and, and maybe it's because English managers have been bone idle for years and years and years and institutionally See, uh, what, creative. Why do we... Because I've watched it's, you guys. It's a one-trick pony when no, talking about it's English not one -trick managers. Pony, it's consistency. English managers, he gets after them every time. Because because there's a there there is a there is a there is a also a, a, a complete and utter shtick from you guys, which is of oh, foreign uh, owners by fo first of all, it started off with foreign owners, foreign uh, oh, owners by foreign players because oh, they're cheaper. Right? <laughs> can now, we start again, so please? Every every aspect of the game has got. So we've got foreign owners, foreign coaches, foreign managers, foreign players. Right? Mm. Why is that? Oh, I know it's because the British are so bloody good at everything. Or is it because there's been a period of time through the 70s and through the 80s where the kind of football that we produced with the exception of your Liverpool side was pedestrian and poor and ultimately our coaching you was Philistine Charles Hughes, Hughes Charles Hughes was a Philistine yeah, with some of his thinking and so now we've got a situation where the foreign coaches have caught up and gone past us and the reason why the Premier League is great it's got nothing to do with English coaches uh, or English coaching it's to do I, with every other aspect you guys have been dragged there so, kicking and screaming so I played, and you don't like it when I played at Liverpool and we, that's the bloody truth when I played at Liverpool <laughs> too busy to we, bench we were attempting to play the exact same way as the, the successful teams do today. You, I just said you're dominate, an exception. Dominate I just the said but you that's how exception. football hasn't changed. Our idea was we'll dom there'll be a bit of a war in the first 20 minutes. Yeah. We, meet, we match that, you know, tackle for tackle, which isn't allowed today. This is why it's easier to play today. So in the first 20 minutes of our game, half an hour, whatever it was, 45 minutes, we had to roll our sleeves up knowing that no one said, oh, today we're going to play Liverpool. Let's make it a jolly nice game of but football. It's a they went to war gym. with us. We it's had to deal with that. Gym. And then we sat, then we, we the, the game settled into a game of football and we would out pass them and out play them and it's out a lazy score trope. them. And then when we played <laughs> on a Wednesday night, football. when we played on a Wednesday night, it was a game of football for the first minute and we could do that as well. But you were the so exception. That's the best but you were the exception, Graham. The question is, why is there no English coaches? And then you use an example of whether it's because foreign owners get foreign coaches. Now the whole, no, the I'm, whole I'm asking the whole question. Pyramid. Well, have a look at it. Foreign owners, foreign managers, 
foreign coaches, foreign academy directors, foreign sporting directors, foreign players. Uh, what's no. the common denominator? English uh, and British managers no. aren't doing what they should be See, doing to be top of the tree. Right. Well, well, Jamie's got a point. point. No, the, my the point season is before it's Wenger arrived point. in 96, there were 14 English managers in the huh? Premier League. The season before Wenger arrived. By the time Wenger left football, there were four. Yeah, the, the, maybe the interview better. My point is, right <laughs> now... Kind of interview better. Well, you've you had, had your moment. You've, 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 you've had your moment. You got handed out by the British Right press. now, so you've got foreign owners. This is my point. <laughs> yes. You've got foreign Carry owners. On, you've got foreign owners who make the decisions, who they employ. <laughs> oh, God. So maybe when they've gone down and have interviewed the guy from... <laughs> oh, really? ...from the north of England or some cockney geezer... Yes. Maybe they've chose this chap who speaks English in a very nice... Very nice. Yeah. Way. We'll give him the job. I'm not. I'm. I'm dressing up as if it's all about okay. how you speak. Because it's but, yeah, but, right. but I no, think I, there's a whole series. Of, then I come back to Spain. <laughs> coaches, to do with them. Spanish coaches were very popular. <laughs> it's because, a fad. because Span Spain had a really Span. good national team at the time, right. and they were winning the World Cup and winning the Euros. So yeah. they were the popular choice at the time. Italians. <laughs> At one point with the choice. One thing we shouldn't forget, and there's a message to remind us from Jim, a West Ham fan, David Moyes won a European trophy not even a year ago. Of course, uh, David Moyes not English but Scottish. But uh, that is a Good fact. Show. That is a fact. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.